Have you ever found it strange the number of CRMs and no code tools that say, yeah, we can help you manage your sales pipeline. And then they just give you a sales funnel that tells you exactly the information you already know. Oh, you have five opportunities in evaluation and you have four that are going through negotiation. It's just regurgitating the data back to you that you already know. Instead, sales leaders are asking themselves the questions, how long are our deals taking? How long are we taking in each stage of the pipeline? So in this first chart, we're able to see, okay, on average, we're taking 35 days in our evaluation stage. If we're just updating stages or statuses of our pipeline, this doesn't give us that level of insight. We're looking at our pipeline itself to understand where our deal's progressing through the pipeline. So we have a proposal and we'd expect that next we'd go into evaluation, but it turns out that only 40% of our deals are going into evaluation. We're closing some right off the bat and then we're also losing a bunch as well. So how do we understand where our deals are actually going through our sales cycle? And then finally, where is it within our sales process that we see deals falling off? Is it during qualification? We're disqualifying more. People are getting turned off when we're having that initial conversation. Is it the proposal? They're not liking what they hear when we initially propose that to them. Is it during evaluation? They just kind of go cold. Is it during the negotiation? And so these are the kinds of questions that experienced sales professionals are asking themselves to better manage their pipeline. It's not just how many opportunities do I have at a current stage? Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we help companies get automated through portals, apps, and integrations to your various business applications. I used to work at a CRM company and we had a tool that we would sell to our prospects that would help them get this kind of insights, but we were selling it at thousands of dollars a year. Today, we're going to talk about how we can build this directly within Airtable, but this same kind of logic is going to work in other no-code applications as well. So first, let's take a look at the data structure that we need to create in order to support the kind of analytics that we want to understand. So of course, we need our opportunities table. This is where we're tracking the status or the stage that we're currently in with our opportunity. But this isn't actually where we're going to track the underlying data, because you can imagine if we want to understand how many days we've been in this stage, we need to create a new kind of table to store this information. So you'll wanna create a new table. I just called mine pipeline updates. And let's talk through the different fields that we need. So in the opportunity, we have our status field and you can see that we have these different options, qualification, proposal, evaluation, negotiation, et cetera. And we wanna make sure that we recreate this same field inside of our pipeline updates. So here you'll want to create the same single select option that we have. The colors don't really matter here, but make sure that you have the same values in the same order so that we can use our automations to automatically update the statuses as they occur. And then you're going to duplicate that field entering status. And I've created this one called exiting status. Now you can change the names of these if you want, if it means something more specific to you, but this is going to be the same thing here. It's going to be a single select with the same exact values. Next up, we have the opportunity. This is a linked record field. It's linking to the opportunities and it's only going to link to a single record. We don't want to have it attached to multiple opportunity records. Now this opportunity ID is a unique identifier and it's to help us in our automation process. So let's head back into our opportunities table. I'm gonna to scroll to the end and I've added two different fields. One is this opportunity ID. This is a formula field and we can just put in record ID. You can start typing that and put in the parentheses. That's gonna automatically have this unique identifier. We cover this topic more in depth in another video if you wanna dive in a little bit deeper. The other field that we're adding to the opportunity I just called today and this is a formula where we're just putting in today. What's the date? today that this action is taking place. And we're gonna use that in our other table. So let's head back into our pipeline updates. And you can see now that we have that link to our opportunity. Now we have a lookup field where this is looking up to that opportunity ID that we created. So you can choose which value you want and we're showing that opportunity ID. Next up, we have an enter and exit date. These are just simple date fields, so we don't need the time associated with it. We're basically saying, hey, when we're updating this opportunity, now we're time stamping it. How long has it been in this current stage? So nothing too complicated here. We need an enter date and an exit date. You could do it by the hour or something else if you want to, but we're just keeping it simple for now. We're also adding in a checkbox or a Boolean here which is to indicate the current stage. So if it's checked, this is the stage that we're currently in in the opportunity. 
And then finally, we're adding another field for days in stage. And days in stage is going to be the difference between our end date and our start date, or I should say our enter date and our exit date to be able to display how many days have we been in this current stage. So I called mine days in stage, and this formula is using a date time diff, which helps us in formatting those dates. And so we're taking our exit date, subtracting our enter date, and we're doing this in number of days. So now we should have the core fields that we need. And this is not going to be a table that I am updating myself. This is something that's always going to be run in the back end by automations. So this is something I'd suggest that you don't just leave open and have everybody access. You probably want your sales team utilizing your data and interacting with your data through interfaces. And this can just be a table that lives in the back end that no one actually touches. So let's head over into our automations. We're actually going to create two different automations. One is when we're initially creating the record and we have our very first value, which is going to be qualification. And then later on, when we change those values, now we have to have a separate automation because it's going to be a different trigger here. So the first thing we want to do is take this pipeline update record that we are creating, and we want to link it back to the opportunity that just triggered this so that we can say, hey, we might have five different stages we go through. All of these pipeline update records are relating back to that opportunity. So in our linked opportunity field here, we're plugging this value in dynamically, and we're looking for that Airtable record ID from that record creation trigger. And next, what we want to do is take the status of that opportunity. Again, we're doing this dynamically. We're going to plug in that status into this field. Now, in reality, we're doing a default for this, so we could not do it dynamically and just plug in qualification as our status. But you might have a use case where this starts differently. Maybe every opportunity that's created doesn't necessarily start with that same status. And then for our enter date, we're using that formula field that we created in the opportunity called today. And we're plugging that in so it'll take today today's date since we don't have a nice little date picker and we can do this dynamically and just say always use today's date. That's why we did it as a formula. Then we're also going to say this is now the current stage. So as we create the record, anytime we create a new record, that's always the current stage for the opportunity. Make sure you have that enabled and let's head back and test this out to make sure it works. So we'll go to our opportunities and we'll add a new one. I'll just call it new op, not do anything fancy there. We'll click off and you can see if we scroll over, it's added it as qualification because this is our default option here. If we go into our pipeline updates, this should now have created this record that we have. It's got all of the information based on our automation. So we've got the status. It's automatically linked to that new op. We're showcasing that opportunity ID from the automation itself. We have an enter date. We don't have an exit date because we haven't left this stage yet. And then it's indicating that this is our current stage. Now you can, of course, make your name field fancy and use a formula to concatenate this, but I really don't care at this point because we're not doing anything with this data aside from reporting on it. And we're doing that in aggregate. So you could title this something if you want, but really doesn't matter at this point. Now let's head back into our automations again, and we'll create our second automation. It's going to be similar in nature, but it's a little bit more complex. So this time we're running on the update of our opportunity record because presumably we are changing our status field. So we'll run this on opportunities and we're going to run this only when the status changes because we don't really care about other updates to the system. We just care about when that status changes. So the next thing we want to do is to understand, do any pipeline update records already exist for this opportunity? So if we look back at our data here, we could see, you know, if it's this new opportunity, we already have one of these records. We want to find that record because we need to update it with the exit date and we need to update it with the exiting status. We're not just going to leave that record be. We have to find that most recent one in order to make those modifications to then create a new record and say, OK, well, we went from qualification to you know evaluation or whatever stage came next. And then we're going on and creating a new record. So back to my automations here, we're going to find records. And I'm doing this based on a couple of different conditions. So we'll choose condition here. So we're saying, hey, where the opportunity ID contains the Airtable record ID. And that's why we made that lookup, because we want to be able to identify the opportunity ID and compare that against the Airtable record ID that we got from the trigger. So this is being plugged in dynamically. We're choosing this here. If you press that blue plus button, this is where you're going to choose the Airtable record ID. Next, we want to make sure that we're only finding this one record. If we've had five changes of statuses in the past, we don't want all of those records returned. So we're going to say, and the exiting status is empty. And then we're also going to check to see if that current stage is checked. 
And the reason we're doing this is that if we don't use a checkbox, it's still gonna look against these other records that we have. And it's gonna try to update it too quickly for us. So we have this extra safety check here to make sure that we're looking only for that current stage record. So now we have some conditionality here. We're saying, okay, if we were able to find a single record for that first step, because remember, we don't wanna find all of those stages. We just wanna find the most recent one. What's the current stage that we're in? If we found that record, and if that record length equals one, let me just click in here and edit this. We're taking a look at our find record step and under list properties, it will say length. So that's how we get to length of records. If that equals one, then we're going to proceed with the next steps. So our first action here is going to be to update that record that we just found. So we're updating our pipeline updates record. And then we go in dynamically and we can say, okay, let's grab the find records and we're gonna take a list of the Airtable record IDs. So we can do make a new list of Airtable record IDs. It should only be that one record because we've got that conditionality here. And then we're going to update the exiting status. So we already had the enter status. We don't wanna change that because it entered as this given status. And now the current status, it might've gone from qualification all the way to closed one in a single step. We don't know where it exited. So let's update that with the current value. And then again, we're gonna plug in today's date in the exit date. And then the current stage, we're gonna to toggle back to no or empty because we're gonna create a new record and that new record will be the current stage and the old record is no longer current. So this will update our previously current record to say this is no longer current. Here's all the updates to that. Now we're done with that information. We're archiving it. And now we need to create the new record. And this is basically like what we did in our last automation. So now we'll create a record and we're going to go ahead and plug in that opportunity ID, the entering status, the date, and then this is going to be current stage marked to true again. And then just to make sure we're thorough, we can also say, hey, if we didn't get back one record, if we said really there were no records that were presented, then we could go ahead and just create the record. This could be the first one as opposed to needing to update the previous record. Okay, so let's go back into our data and we've got our new opportunity here. We're gonna change that status. Let's just double check our pipeline updates. So remember we have that one record so far. We have the entering status of qualification. So presumably using our automation, this should update this record and we should create a new record for our new stage. So let me go back to the opportunity and we're gonna change it from qualification to proposal. I'll tab off, go into my pipeline updates, and our automation should run in the background here. Yeah, and we can see that this is now updating the exiting status and the date, and it created this new record. So now this record is no longer our current stage, it's unchecked, and then we have a new record. And so now anytime we do this, let me head back into my opportunity here. Where did my new op go? Here we go, it's in proposal. Now maybe we skip evaluation and we go directly to negotiation. Let's click off of that, head back into pipeline updates. This should run again at this point. We can see it's now updated the negotiation exit date and now our current state is negotiation. So this is the tricky part. This is how we actually set up the data in the back end to be able to automatically update every single time we have a change to our opportunity status. Now all you have to do is add the data to your interface in a chart. I encourage you to check out the other videos we've done on creating interfaces because I think that'll help provide a lot of background context here. I've just added a couple of charts. In this one, we're saying average days in stage. So we're looking at specific records. We're taking a look at the entering stage and making sure that that entering stage is not closed one or closed lost because at that point, once it's been in kind of that final stage, we don't really care about it's been closed one for a year and a half or something like that. So I'm filtering out those results and then we're displaying this grouped by the entering status. So I've got qualification, proposal, evaluation and negotiation. And then down here, our Y axis is based on that field days in stage. Now this one I was able to add a filter to and so we could say, okay, we plug in the filter, we could say qualification, oh, we're always going to proposal from there, here's proposal. So you can plug in those values as well. So if you wanna do a deeper dive, definitely check out our videos on interfaces. Now, if you have any questions about your own Airtable setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.